All right, everybody, we are live. We are finally live. Welcome. We're just we're just taking it's just taking a second. And okay. So what a journey that has been. I just want to just fix one thing and then we're going to start. So if you're just joining us, why are we late? And why is it in this group and not my Marla Lee music page? It's because for some reason, um, when I go to do Zoom on my Marla Lee music page, it doesn't let me, it's banned me from that. So I don't know why Facebook, why you're banning me from all this, but um, I'm sorry for those who came to our 12 o'clock session and did not see it. Um, but we are here and what we're going to do is we're going to post this in my Marla Lee music page as a recording afterwards. So better late than never to learn about Patrick Cooperman and his amazing drums. And wow, what a workaround was that. So thank you for your patience, Patrick. We did it. All right, let's, let's get to the topic. <laughs> okay. So if you guys have any questions during this interview, uh, you're welcome to ask them below. And um, you know, as and, and when we post the recording, if you have any questions, you can type them below and we'll check them later. So as you guys all know, Patrick um, Cooperman, Cooperman Drums are sponsors of my Frame Drum Academy. And they're so generous to off 10% off uh, two of their drums to our students as well as they offer a voucher for a discount off a Cooperman drum for our Share the Drum Challenge winner. So I, I met Cooperman a long, long time ago, back in 1999. Um, the quick story is that my mentor, my first mentor, John Bergamo, I did a gig with him and he wouldn't pay me with the money, but he paid me with a check to get a Cooperman drum. And I met them at PASIC and I remember never leaving the booth. I could not figure out what drum to get. It took me forever because they have so many beautiful drums. And um, yeah, so they're, they're a wonderful company. And what I, what I like so much about their drums is just like they, they, they make their drums by hand. And, you know, each drum is like custom made and, and it's like, it's like, a, it's like a real family business. And there's not too many of those left anymore. You might be taken over by bots soon, Patrick. What do you think? <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. Let's not worry about that. One. So I thought we would do this live today and talk a bit about um, the heads, because I know a lot of people, you know, they're like, what's the difference between the clear head and the black head? And, you know, what can you tell us? Can we start off by, by sharing with us a bit about the different kinds of heads that you use on your drums? Sure, absolutely. And, uh, and I'd also point out that there's a, a blog on our web store that addresses uh, the topic of all the different kind of heads that we offer. But since we're here live, let's, let's just talk about it. So for frame drums, so what I call a card drum or a bandier, we primarily use two heads, uh, Remo Renaissance or Remo Ebony Suede. Uh, we also use on a, on a very limited number of drums, but almost never on a, on a frame drum, uh, Remo Weather King Clear. And then uh, the, we also use on rare occasions on a very specialized set of drums, a Remo a Cloth Mylar combination. So there, there are four heads, a Remo uh, Ebony Suede, Remo Renaissance, Remo Weather King Clear, and Remo uh, Cloth Mylar. There, uh, we also do skin heads, uh, but from time to time, and they're not my preference and they're not my recommendation at all but uh, we do also offer them. Each head material uh, has a different timber, a different tone to it. So it's very important to understand the difference between pitch and timber or tone. And so the different heads uh, operate within the same pitch range that's defined by the diameter of your drum, but the head material itself has characteristics that change the tone, the timber of the sound you're hearing. So they basically go in degrees of brightness or warmth. So the brightest head material is the Weather King Clear. Uh, we would only use that on a rick, a tambourine, like something like this. So this drum is very, very hard and bright and articulate. It doesn't have the overtones because it's so, it's so very bright. And so, uh, so that would not be a head you would choose to put on a car drum, a frame drum. Uh, the Remo Renaissance is the standard go-to head material for 
for car drum. So here is uh, a Remo Renaissance on a uh, 15 and a half inch car drum. You can see it, it's opaque in sound. It's mylar, so it's synthetic. And it's really the workhorse of the frame drum line. So it sits right there nicely mid range. Uh, the alternative would be to use the Remo Ebony suede or Remo black. So it's very reflective on the inside, but uh, opaque on the outside. Do we want to use the, the Remo suede so we can look at ourselves when we play? Is that why? <laughs> I sometimes enjoy that. But you can also look at the other person, right? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> But the, but the point is that the Remo uh, ebony head uh, is darker or warmer, warmer, or so the pitch is the same, but the timber is is darker and, and funkier, it's warmer. Um, and then last but not least would be that cloth mylar material. So something like this is a very specialized drum, a tambourine, and it has a combination of mylar on the back and cloth on the front. So those are the four heads and basically the four uh, reasons we would use them. So from, from brightest clear to medium Renaissance to uh, a warmer, darker uh, ebony to a completely flat and thuddy uh, cloth mylar. Right, so you know the, 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 black, the ebony suede came later you know, so in the beginning when I started working with Cooperman, they weren't doing that head. And I, I mean, that's why I like when our, our, that our students get a discount off two drums, because I think it's good to try them both. It's like, what do you, what do you prefer? I prefer them both, you know. Some days I want to play an ebony suede head, some days I want to play a renaissance head. I think it's a good thing to try both. So there's not one that's better than the other. And, you know, if you hear a video of a drum that you like of theirs and you're like, you see the head that it's using, then maybe you should try that first. Um, but really, there's no like one is better than the other. It's really just like a, a matter of taste. And again, I, I mean, if if you get hooked, which, you know, if you're if you're in the group right now, where we're watching, you know, you guys like frame drumming. So, you know, it's a good, good investment to get more than one drum eventually. Um, so yeah, they're, they're really great. So for example, here, here is a black suede. All right, and then here is the Renaissance. It's a little bit of a bigger drum, so it's gonna be a... This is a 20, this is an 18. So they're different sizes, but you know, it's, it's, it's great to have both drums of both heads um but like what patrick was saying you wouldn't want to get the mylar head or the clear plastic like they have on the the jingle drum there for your frame drum it's just that it doesn't resonate as well so um patrick can you talk a little bit more now about the sizes and the and of like the drums you have on those on the rack there and you know what you see people use it for in the different styles and and yeah sure it it's like the head. So in the same way that the heads have a certain uh, range from brightest and most articulate to dark and warm, um, the diameters have a very similar effect on the way a drum performs. But the diameter is mechanical in terms of defining the pitch. So a 20 inch drum with a Renaissance head is the same pitch as the 20 inch drum with an ebony head on it, but they sound slightly differently. But so let's start with the big drum. So we do 22s and 20s. So these large diameters are what are more typically used for people playing lap style who want uh, a lot of bass. So uh, such a big drum is awkward, as you can see, to hold upright. And it's going to necessarily be heavier because you have all that extra material. So. Uh, so we'd go 20 would be the bassiest, most bassy sounding drum, a 20, and then 18, we consider 18 to 22 a bass range. And then, so this is a, a 20. Then we have- That's a beautiful drum. Um, an 18, like the one Marla had, with the, but I think Marla's has, a, has an ebony head on it. This is a Renaissance uh, 18. So it comes down a little bit. So it's a little bit easier to manage. So 18 would be the smallest bass range drum. Uh, hopefully it's a little uh, 
more easily played in the upright position. But even so, it, it's, it's a little bit big for most people. So then uh, the next thing would be to hit a mid-range drum, not knock drums over. A mid-range drum would be a, a 16. So here's a nice 16. And you can really hear that, that mid-range sound with the mid-range head. So a great combination. 16 Renaissance is a real workhorse for most people. Can you show, can you show us that, Patrick, this design? Now, look at the design on that. So oh, yeah. this one has this? an inlay and an overlay. So okay. this is a, a custom drum. It's just sitting around. This one is actually for sale on our webpage right now. So wow. that's just a big green So one. just so you guys know, when you order it, he's going pretty fast here. But when you order a drum, you can say, hey, I want it painted pink and purple <laughs> or I want it you know I want this the band because it has a rope around it I want the rope to be a certain color or you can pay a bit extra and get what he just showed look at this beautiful overlay wow yeah that's pretty cool right so that's mm -hmm. a 16 with an ebony head on it this is a 15 and a half inch diameter really unusual drum for a really unusual person and unusual drummer right <laughs> named Marla. And then, um, so they would go down, for example. Let's see, so the, let's see the designs on that one. What's the design so on that a, one? Another very personalized drum. So it's full of uh, Native American, Hopi Indian, uh, Coca-Cola. Where, where, where can people choose where to get the designs if they want to add it to their drums? Is there like a um, thing on your website that? Yeah, there's a page on the website that says customize your drum with an overlay. So uh, this person discussed these images, which are very personal and meaningful to the player, the drummer who's getting this drum. Um, so that, that's a decorative thing. But this is a 12 by four inch diameter car drum. So this one is quite bright, but it has an ebony head on it to bring it down in timber a little bit. The same thing with a Marla purple haze drum. So small diameter, but a black head. So small diameter, high pitch, but the black head brings the timber and the tone back down. This one has a standard bearing edge, but Marla's has a rounded bearing edge. We're going to go a little into more the... rounded or Marla's a little more rounded. Yeah. More well-rounded drummer all the way around. She's not the standard person. <laughs> but well, you know, one of the cool things is that uh, in, in Marla's Academy, we're going to take a deep dive into all of these details like bearing edges and diameters and depths and pitches and all that kind of thing. But this is just an attempt to, to expose you to the range of things that are possible and the range of things that that really impact the way drums sound. So from say from a 12 inch diameter to a 22, we do extreme. So we've done 10 inch diameters. We do a 28 inch gong drum for um, that's used by people who are doing sound healing. And uh, yeah, that's the video that I just uh, you if you've seen any of the promotion for the Academy, it's the one that I actually did in their backyard huge drum I, I remember they brought it back and i was like i'm keeping this drum of course i never kept it but you know i i kept it for my time that i was there beautiful drum if you're into sound healing um but it's it's very big so it's not a drum to practice on um and yeah so um patricia says that's my drum which one is your drum <laughs> Got lots of comments here, so let's see the comments here. Patricia's probably suede with a gold overlay. Wow, you guys! I hear you. Beautiful. Um. So I could post something on our group page about finding images for the overlays. That's great. Yeah. So Patrick, could you? Could you show us a little bit inside of like in, into this, the shop, what your shop is like for people that have never seen it? Sure. Like, let, and, me, uh, let me turn the camera around and, and see if I can uh, go a little mobile here. I want to just bear with me while it becomes a little awkward. But, uh, let's see. And just so, you, just so you know, so when you guys, you know, if you do decide to join the Academy, you know, and you want to in, enjoy your 10% discount and you find yourself ordering a drum, like we said, it can be really customized to what you want, not like, you know, exactly like I want it 17.6 design, you know, but I'm saying we can change the colors, we can change the rope, 
you can add an overlay on it. And I think that's really special about the Coopermans because not many companies will do that for you. They really don't care. And these guys care. They want you to be happy. And it's made by hand. So it's, it's really nice. And that was the one thing that I really appreciated um, about them. I'm just trying to find our, our group here on, on my phone so I can take any questions that are coming in. And if you guys have any questions you want to ask, you, you know, we are, we can take some questions. Do you want to ask? Okay. All right. I'll, I'll walk around while you're collecting questions. Yeah. So, uh, so this is, uh, the drum room where I, the drums are finished off. Heads are mounted. You can see all the different kinds of head materials and the different, uh, types of drums. You see a, a punch press for making jingles for tambourine styles and ricks. Sometimes we have uh, interesting one-offs. Uh, these are examples of uh, drummers who have sent in their very personalized uh, images of how do we want a very unusual drum with jingles and different jingle slots. But I think the um, significant story here is this variety of drums. So again, that's that the orange one is the 15 and a half, which is uh, going to go to Marla. It's oak. The one above it is a Coco Pele drum. The purple one is a 16. That is going to go to Patricia. We have here a Rick and beside it, what I call a TST, a thick shell drum with uh, little Indian uh, gaval bells. Uh, these are the drums that are awaiting uh, the heads to be put on them. So we have a variety of things, a 20 inch Asheville drum, a feather weight drum, a custom, another custom one with purple and gold images on it, a whole bunch of Velez drums. So this, the one with the green inlay is uh, a 13 inch Glenn Velez model and a 15 inch Velez model. You can see more of them below. Wow, look at all those babies. Amberellos, another 12 inch. That's really basically, the white one is basically a purple haze drum. We have an unusual one here with a little um, 18th century style spinner. That's going to go to Francesco Terezi, an amazing drummer. You should all get to meet him. Uh, these are uh, a whole stack of shells that are going to go to another drum builder who does uh, Native American style drums. Uh, these are drum shells that have been recently bent and are being reformed. Down below, you'll see a shell where the liner has been installed with a million clamps. There's another one. Uh, this is uh, the finished shop. There's the 28 inch diameter uh, shell that we were talking about with its tuning ring above it. Um, so this is just a variety of uh, woodworking tools that we use to uh, form the shells and finish them. You can see all the variety of tools that are involved in doing this. A whole bunch of uh, tambourines are being made over here. And uh, something that, that probably would be interesting to most people. So the steaming process and the bending process was created here uh, 99 years ago in uh, wow. 1904. And this uh, bending equipment was uh, built here, installed here in 1924. It's basically a giant windlass. The wood is all local and green, so it comes from within 30 miles of the shop. It's dimension put into that box where the door is open and steamed. And then this windlass machine wraps the piece of wood around that block. And then it's tied off and clamped up. And then it's eventually made into your drum. That's a super quick view of this uh, part of the shop. So uh, the shop also has a sawmill and a dimension shop, but this is the finished workshop. So there are about three guys who work on these drums and hopefully we can make the drum that's right for you, right? How's that? Uh do you ever, Pete, Pete is asking, do you, do you ever steamers in that, do you ever, do you ever do steamers in that steamer? <laughs> <laughs> like clams and hot dogs and things like that? <laughs> we, we don't talk about that kind of thing, but yes. It's, <laughs> it's a pretty amazing shop. And, and once we ever get um, 
our fall tour, fall retreat together. We take a shop, we take a shop tour. It's really fun to go there. And um, it's amazing how you, how you make the drums, you know? How long does it take to make a drum? Like when someone orders a drum and you have to make it by hand, what is the, because the, so, people are always like, where's my drum? And I'm like, ah, oh they got to make the drum. It's not like they have like a hundred back ordered, you know? Yeah. These days it's taking almost a month to get a drum out of us. So uh, that's a pretty uh, long time. We're, we're behind uh, our schedules right now. My fantasy goal is two weeks, but right now we're running four weeks. So, uh, so yeah, that's a bit of time. We try to put a bunch of drums into what I would call a production pipeline. So we, we're bending wood all the time and we're uh, sawing wood and making slats but we don't finish it off because we do all those varieties like you can see. And so uh, we don't stock all these variations. We sort of are short order cooks trying to finish them off uh, as, as demanded. Right now, for example, um, we're behind because I didn't get the delivery of the head material from Remo that I was expecting. So people are waiting on Renaissance, on drums with Renaissance heads for uh, Remo to make that delivery. So it can be anything from a normal process of, oh, Marla asked for a 15 and a half inch diameter drum and nothing was in the pipeline like that. So it took us a month to saw it and get it to the finished products um, place. Or it could be that Remo didn't deliver on the schedule that I thought they were going to deliver on. And so we're, we're running behind. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna blame supply chain issues like most businesses are these days. And then also uh, just my getting older and slower. They're saying it's worth the wait. So you can wait. You can say you're going to the Bahamas. You're going to go to the <laughs> You're going to have a little vacation. <laughs> well, well, I, I appreciate the patience. I really do. Uh, it's it's our goal to, to get a drum into your hands as quickly as possible. Uh, we, we recognize that it's an investment. Um, it's something that people, when they finally push the button on, are very excited about. And so, man, I want to get the drums into your hands quickly as well. So I'm, we're doing our best. So Sonia wants to know, is that the best way to store the drums right there behind you? Well, what's nice about these, what I, these racks is that they, they have, they're supporting the drums on two points. So there, there are two points there. The drum is cradled effectively. And yeah, that's a really nice way to store the drum. I think I put up on uh, another one of those blog posts that I had mentioned uh, something about what I call a roll stop, which is basically just two boards that you can cradle the drum into, easily make it yourself, or you can buy one from us. Um, and that cradles the drum and, and they sit on the ground. Alternatively, you can build yourself a, a rack like, like we've done there. Um, people ask that question about, can I hang my drum? The answer is kind of, yeah. I suggest you look at this blog post because it describes all the uh, issues and topics around that. But um, you know, the drums are, are very rugged and they're designed to be rugged. So, um, so don't baby them, uh, but treat them. I would tell people treat them like you would your pet. You know, if you have uh, a dog, you don't leave it in a horribly hot car or a freezing cold car. Um, and, uh, and I think you should treat your drums similarly. We see great pictures of cats all the time in drums, right? So, so we know that, that they like that kind of thing. Treat them well. So when 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 we finally do this fall retreat, um, we, we Cooperman gives gives me a rack like this, and they give me a whole thing of drums like this for everybody to play. So it's it's kind of like what it looks like, which is really special because we get to put our hands on all these drums. And I'm really hoping to have our retreat in November still. So I just gotta finalize everything. But um, yeah, that's a really great way of of stacking them. And what Patrick says is true. Is like the drums are very durable. Um, I mean, he once said that I could drop it from like, you know, a, like a, a floor from a, and I was like, no way am I dropping a drum. Um, but it's true, the heat and the and is what is what, is what you want and the cold is what really affects the tuning of the drum. And so um, this little live here is about, you know, drum sizes and the drum heads. And just for you guys to meet Patrick, for those who have never met Patrick before and get a little sneak peek into their amazing factory. And by the way, if you're ever in Vermont, um, you can always re request a tour. You can always come visit them. It's a lot of fun. And, um, but we're gonna do, if, you know, all of our students this year, uh, we have another meeting with Patrick on the 7th it is. That's kind of like a, an extra little masterclass with Patrick that we're doing where we're gonna talk about 
favorite topics like tuning. Don't you love that topic? Oh, oh yes. And we're gonna talk about drum care and we were, and it will be a live class. So you guys will be online with us. And this is for the 101, 202 and 303 students can, are all invited and you can ask any questions then. So this is not your last time seeing Patrick for those in the academy. And I just want to share, you know, we're really grateful for your support in our academy. I know you've made many students happy, you know, when we're done with reading, I, I just want you to Patrick to read the little comments of people who really appreciate your drums. And, you know, we, we want to thank you so much because I know th they're not cheap drums, but they're like quality, you know, and so super quality. So any kind of discount really helps us and the students, you know, enjoy. And they are really drums that last forever. So what I like to say is, um, I don't have it out here, but I, I have had a drum with them, I think for about 18 years. And it finally got a facelift like three years ago, which means it got the head change. So you can have the body of a drum forever. Um, and then after a while, you might want to get the head change. It took me like, I think 15 years before I got my first facelift. Uh, and, and you know the, the the head changes are not that expensive, so it's really a drum that you have for life, which I think is is really nice. It's worth the investment. Of course, you don't have to have a Cooperman drum to enjoy the Frame Drum Academy. You can you know enjoy any enjoy it on any type of drum. Um, and another thing I want to thank you for, Patrick, is your um, donation for the Share the Drum Challenge winner. So for those of you guys who don't know what that is, at the end of the Academy. Um, I have everybody submit a video, and it can be a video of anything, just not this. You got to play something. And then everyone who submits a video uh, enters into a raffle, and then we choose a winner, and they get a voucher towards a, frame, a Cooperman frame drum, which is a really great gift. And, and we're not sure we're going to do this every year, so but we are doing it this year, and uh, it's it's really fun. So we're, we're really grateful for your support and your caring and your personalized attention to everybody, you know, it's, it's, it's really great. This is very rare in this world to have a company like this. And, um, yeah, so, um, I'm just going to read the questions one more time. And then if you, if I didn't answer a question, you guys are always welcome. Uh, the, the question is, what is that clamping process doing? Do you want to answer that Patrick, please? Of the one with the many, many clamps. Um, let's see. So, you can see in, in this drum, hopefully, uh, there is a shell and then there's what I call a liner hoop. The liner hoop is where the hardware for the tuning system is embedded and installed. And all those clamps, I assume that's what the question is, why, why is there a hundred clamps around the diameter? It's, it's putting this liner into this shell. It needs to be as absolutely tight as possible. So no gaps, no air. and um, and that's why it takes as many clamps as we can possibly fit on the drum. Wow. Um, can you just tell us what year you started making frame drums? Well, my dad started making baron drums around 76, 75, 76. So that's, a, that's a, its earliest frame drum, uh, you know, versions. I mentioned that the business had been bending wood since 1925. And they were making tambourine and banjo rims and all that, but they weren't really making drums. So the frame drum started being built in, uh, in their earliest versions in, in the 70s. And then uh, the variety of frame drums that you see right now are the result of our involvement with a, a stable of artists uh, during the 1990s. And that's when we met John Bergamo and Glenn Velez and, and the product really leaped forward. So. The 70s drums are strictly barons between the 70s and the 90s, only baron drums. And then starting in the 90s, this huge variety as we meet more and uh, new artists with new and clever ideas from everyone. And we meet Marla and uh, up until we meet our latest people like uh, Nadav Friedman I met the other week. And I think he's just a brilliant drummer and, and brought all kinds of new ideas to me. So, uh, so the, the drums are evolving. So I don't know where you want to see the beginning hopefully there is no end to it so. so i know a lot of people watching are our students and uh, i talk a lot about john bergamo and i know that patrick and john were were close what would you say what would you say about john for those who never got to meet him because he was just the oh, coolest dude you know cool dude funky brilliant uh, all of those things i mean my dad knew uh john in new york city and and i and then we sort of lost touch with him but i 
re-hooked up with him in the late 90s, I'd say, mid, mid to late 90s. And uh, he's just brought so much to the table. He really helped me understand this, uh, this notion of pitch and timber and diameters and its effect. I mean, you know, he was a brilliant teacher and uh, just a crazy geniusy sort of artist as well. So everything from bowing drums, right? So uh, bowing a drum to playing tablas to uh, cream drums and kanjiras. I mean, I, I don't know. He's just, just a genius, yeah? Yeah, well, what, what drums did you make? What, what a West you Coast make? anchor and an East Coast anchor. I always thought of, of John as the West Coast anchor of the frame drum world and uh, Glenn Velez as the East Coast anchor of the frame drum world. I know. You know how many times I really wanted to get them to play? I wanted to play with them and me on a song so badly when I was when I was in college. I was like trying to do it and it was just too, it was too hard. But um, yeah. And, and what was John's favorite drum to play? What do you remember making for him? They were smaller diameters, I think, and, and that's, you know, interesting in the context of, of your group. I mean, John was, his, he was a small person in stature, in spite of his, like, incredible range of drumming. I mean, he would play a 22-inch drum, but it would almost, you know. Yeah, yeah I remember consume, that. It would, yeah. <laughs> consume his body, you know. So I think John would naturally tend towards a smaller diameter frame drum, actually. Yeah. Ah, well, it's nice to hear other people talk about John. Um, I'm, I want to get Randy uh, to speak with our community one day and tell stories about John because it's it's good to remember our teachers and and um, and you know so Cooperman has worked closely with both Glenn Velez and and John Bergamo and um, and with a wide range of frame drummers throughout the years and and we're just we're grateful for your support and um, yeah, let me take take that moment though to to just add that like you know so our involvement with marla and the frame drum academy is because we grow our our business because we grow our knowledge and appreciation for new ideas new drumming styles I mean, every frame drummer from marla's academy who speaks with me and and chooses to have a custom-made drum you know really takes us all to a new place in in drum and drum designs and so yeah the artists and the students are all contributing to this uh, evolution of the frame drum and Martin Luther Academy is at the pioneering forefront of that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, well, you remember when I, you guys, when I first visited them, I was trying to figure out my design and it took me a lot of trips to figure out the Marla Tar design in the beginning. But it's, it's really wonderful how you can adapt to people's needs and the, and the designs and you know, it's it's amazing that there still are designs to be made. You know, there's still new oh, innovations. It's, it's, it's endless. kind of like drum techniques. It's kind of like frame drum techniques. It's endless. And um, well, we want to thank you guys. And oh, you want to say something else, Patrick? You want okay, to so some of your students are busily recreating uh, ways to hold a drum and anchor the drum, whether baskets or pogo sticks and and all kinds of brilliant and clever things are coming out out of the academy students so yeah i know isn't pete's stand amazing <laughs> do you have one yet do you have one no i oh i do have one i haven't i don't have it on a drum it's it's amazing oh yeah someone writes uh they're they're like chips you can't just have one i agree I, you guys don't <laughs> even want to see how many frame drums i have actually but um well, we will see Patrick again for those of us, those of you guys who are a student this year. Again, our bonus masterclass with him. I believe it's on the 7th. It's in your uh, welcome letter. And I'll send a reminder out about it. And we want to thank you, Patrick, for your time. And we want to thank everybody for the hiccup with the waiting for your patience. I don't know why Facebook continually bans me when I talk about drums, but we'll figure that out someday. And um, we look forward to seeing you in class again. Our doors close tomorrow, Thursday at midnight. So come join us. And actually reopening next year, I don't think it's going to be in the spring. It's going to be later in the year. So you're going to have to wait more than a year to get in if, if you miss this opportunity. And um, if anything's holding you back from joining, just email me. I'm here helping. And um, we love your drums, Patrick. And how about everybody watching this now? You take five minutes after this and you play your drums, whether it be a Cooperman drum or whatever drum you have. If you don't have a drum, you can just do some drumming on your body. And we look forward to being with you in Vermont, hopefully in November this year for our retreat. And um, thank you, Patrick. Can you not get off the call? I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna stop the live stream. I just wanna ask you one thing before we leave. So there are some questions for you, Patrick, in, our, um, in the chat. You might wanna check that. And um, 
I wish everybody a beautiful day and I will see you in class very, very soon. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> it's so fun. I want you to make sure you read the comments in here, Patrick, okay, when we're done. All right. But, but don't get off yet. Okay, bye bye, everybody.